Here we go. Uh, what I want to talk about are types of energy. First of all, uh, just a little note, in general, a force in the same direction as motion, like uh, F1 below, like this force here, does positive work. Next time, of course, you could have sharpened your pencil like in the five minutes that it took us to get here. You knew, I told you at the end of the year, I'd call you guys out. Okay. A force opposite to motion, uh, friction being a great example, does negative work. Okay. I, work can be positive, work can be negative. It's not a vector though. Negative work does not mean south or down, which leads to a question. What does negative work mean? We're going to touch on that today. But first, I have to define energy. Energy is the ability to do work. Uh, Jared, more specific, it's the ability to exert a force over a distance. If an object force over a distance, that object possesses energy. The energy can be stored, potential energy, or it can be in action. There are many, 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 many types of energy. One of the most common ones is the energy of motion. The energy of motion we call kinetic energy. So Evan was late for class. Let's suppose I finally snapped. I'm going to throw this at Evan's face as hard as I can. When it hits his face, does it have energy? When it hits his face, can it exert a force over a distance? Yes. Anything that's moving has kinetic energy. If I threw it harder, would it exert more force times distance? Would it have more energy? When we get the equation for kinetic energy, it's going to have a V in it, a speed. What if instead of this little toy, what if it was a bowling ball? The equation is also going to have an M in it and some other stuff. But we can make some predictions here already. Well, heat, another type of energy, a dominant form of energy. Uh, heat is created by which force is the force that creates the most heat? Friction. 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 Gravitational potential energy, that's two words. Gravitational, think gravity. Potential, think stored. This is stored energy due to an object's height. The higher an object is, the more stored potential energy it has, because if you let it go, when it hits the ground, it will exert a force over a distance. There's also chemical potential energy, like uh, gunpowder, or food, since you all just had lunch. The reason you eat food is your body then breaks down the chemical bonds, the stored chemical energy in that food, and it transforms it into energy that your body can use. Those either in biology can learn about ATP and the energy of life and that whole cycle and how that works, and glucose and all that. There are many others. Uh, elastic energy. Hey, here's a great example. An elastic band contains elastic energy. In fact, all rubber bands are is an energy storage device, a very clever energy storage device. Uh, there's also uh, nuclear energy. This is the energy stored inside the nucleus. Jaden, this is the energy in the E equals mc squared equation. But in this course, we're going to look at what we call mechanical energy, which is broken down into two main types. Two main types. Kinetic, stuff that moves, which is going to be really helpful because if we know how much kinetic energy an object has, we can figure out how fast it's traveling, which means we can start to figure out how fast roller coasters go at the bottoms of hills, or water slides go at the bottoms of water slides, or lots of fun stuff. And gravitational gravitational potential energy. I'm going to abbreviate kinetic energy as Ke, and I'm going to abbreviate gravitational potential energy as Pe, 
So if I don't specifically say it's gravitational potential energy, Jocelyn, assume it's gravitational potential energy, unless the question clearly says different. But what this does, Duncan, this explains negative work. Really? When you do negative work on an object, what this really means is the object is losing energy. It's losing energy. That's what it means. Which is not a direction at all. Negative work, oh, you got less energy than you started with. Positive work, you've gained some energy. Either the energy of motion, you're going faster, or stored energy, you have the elastic band is pulled even tighter. Put your pencils down, look up. Potential energy, potential energy, Ethan, is the fancy word for uh, stored energy. There are many types of potential energy, stored energy. Batteries have stored electric potential energy. Food has stored chemical potential energy. Explosives have stored chemical potential energy. Elastic bands have stored elastic potential energy. Let's walk through a question. Drake, a great example of stored potential energy is a bow and arrow, pulling on a bow. So suppose it takes 250 newtons of force to pull the arrow back 0.78 meters. Drake, what does part A want me to find? Joules. Joules of energy are stored in the bow. Well, what else is measured in joules? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go force times distance. Drake, did they tell me how many newtons of force it took to pull back on this? Yeah. And this is about right. I did some Googling on the weekend when I set this up. I wanted to be accurate. Yeah, put the phone away, Chief. Uh, 250 newtons. How far back did we pull the bow? 0.78 meters. For a big compound bow, that's about, yeah, that's about right. How many joules of energy, first of all, how much work did we do on the bow? How many joules of energy is the bow now storing? Same question, same answer. 250 times 78, which is uh, what? You might want your formula sheet out during the lesson just so you can see where the new equations I'm about to give you appear on the sheet so you don't have to go hunting for them. Ethan, what'd you get? Sorry? 195 units? Joules, okay? So one way that I can figure out how much energy is stored in an object is force times distance. When I, release, when I release the string, what happens to that stored energy? It gets transferred into, what's KE my abbreviation for? Kinetic energy of the arrow. When you release the string, the bow gives up all of its stored energy. Now, I'm fibbing a bit, Jaden. Almost all of it goes into the arrow, but not all of it. I've shot archery. I've done archery before. There's a sound. That's energy. So you lose some energy to sound. And I've also noticed the bow itself shakes a little bit after you shoot the target. Some of that energy is still stored, causing the bow to shake until that slowly vibrates away. But for our intents and purposes, Drake, in our magic physics world, we'll say all the energy gets transferred into the arrow. And there is a stored energy transfer device, a bow and arrow. Uh, kind of like this. Put your pencils down, look up. But whatever, Joseph, it's good physics. It's a great example of transformed energy. Turn the page. So, when you stretch a rubber band, you're storing potential energy. A battery has stored electric potential energy. We'll talk about that in physics 12. But in this unit, we're going to look at one specific type of potential energy. Gravitational potential energy. This is the work that you have to do against gravity to change an object's height. Uh, this is why lifting things is tiring. What's the equation? You know what? We've already kind of derived it. My abbreviation for potential energy is this. And it's going to be force times distance, except which force when you lift something against gravity, you said? Mg. And which distance? H. That's potential energy. 
which I think is on your formula sheet somewhere. I think it's about two thirds of the way down. Yes. Or, or if you know the weight in Newtons, because is weight, it can also be, uh, and the reason I say that is in about, I think, one third of the questions in your homework, instead of me telling you the mass of the object in kilograms, Dylan, I'll tell you the weight in Newtons, and that's because we're getting towards the end of the year and I'm trying to review the difference between the two. Uh, little note, it's a scalar, because it's energy. So, Jaden, my basketball boy, has a mass of 75 kilograms. First of all, what's his weight? Not 75, that's his mass. His weight, which is Fg, is going to be Mg. It's going to be 75 times 9.8. I don't know if that is your mass in kilograms. I was making a guess as to that. Do you know your mass in kilos? So do you know your mass in kilos? No, that's all I, that's all I was looking for. What's your weight if you were 75 kilograms? What's your weight? It's going to be just below 750. 735 is a guess. Yeah? 735 what? Newtons. OK. Jaden's going up for a dunk. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jaden's, let's pretend Jaden's going up for a dunk. And he can raise his center of mass 75 centimeters from the ground. At the top of his jump, how much potential energy does he possess? Well, potential energy is mgh. And Jaden, I could go 75 times 9.8 times h, but I happen to know mg. What's mg equal to? So as a little shortcut, we'll say it's going to be 735 times what height did you jump to? What height did you jump to, Jaden? Can't use 75. 0.75, right? How many joules of energy do you have at the top of your jump? I'll call it 551 even. Is that okay? That energy had to come from somewhere. Where'd the energy come from? The food that you ate. And if you jump again, you'll burn up another 551 joules of energy. Oh, and the more you jump, the faster you jump, you'll get, you wanna grab that kiddo? The faster you jump, you'll get even more tired because the faster you do work, that's power. Power is tiredness. You could jump once right now and it would be no problem. If I asked you to do 40 jumps in a row, by the end of your 40th jump, you'd be feeling it. Okay. This may be obvious, but it's worth mentioning. How much gravitational potential energy does an object have if it's on the ground? Why? Because H is, as a number, if you're on the ground, H is zero. In other words, right now, sitting on your chairs, if we include you and the chairs as one object, how much energy do you all have right now? Very zero. I'm looking around. It's disgusting. But that's actually going to be a really nice number because it's nice to do math with zeros. Okay. Now, if you stand up, really what I should be saying, by the way, is not how t where I should say uh, how high is your center of mass from the ground. Your center of mass is right around your belly button, right around your navel. So I'm fibbing a bit here, but let's pretend if an object is sitting right on the ground, it's got no potential energy. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. I'm not going to derive this equation. I can, if you want to see where it came from, hit me up later. Justin, take your jacket off and stay a while, sleepy boy. You're dozing off. Take your jacket off. You're dozing off because you're too hot. Trust me. Um, I'm just going to give you the equation. Now, I did say I'm pretty sure it's going to have a mass in it, and it's going to have a speed in it. Yes? Ke equals a half mv squared. That's the equation for kinetic energy. And if you want to, some other time I can show you where I derived it from, but I'm just going to give it to you. 
It's energy, so the units are joules. It's a scalar. And Drake, what's particularly of interest to us is that right there. That squared is going to explain a lot, an awful lot about gas mileage, car accidents, sports, racket sports, golf, and baseball, and hockey in particular. So kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared. Steven, you awake? You gonna make it? I googled this. These are the numbers for a 357 Magnum pistol. It does weigh 8.1 grams. Travels at about 490 meters per second. How much kinetic energy does it possess? Well, kinetic energy equals a half mv squared. On your calculator, you can either type the one half as a 0.5, or you can type it as a one divided by two. I tend to type it as a 0.5 because it's one less keystroke, and I'm that lazy. Riley, what's the mass of this bullet? Don't say 8.1. .1. You gotta divide by 1,000 to get it from grams to kilograms. 490, what? Yep. Yeah. Most common mistake I see kids are, because often that squared, Megan, is the last thing you'll write. I see it time and time and time and time again. Even in my physics 12s, kids are so proud on the test. They've got all the numbers in the right place, and they let their guard down, and they either forget to write the squared, or on their calculator, they forget to hit the squared because they've done all the type typing. They're so proud of themselves, Drake, and they forget that. It happens all the time. Drake, get your calculator out. Crunch that. How much kinetic energy does a 357 Magnum bullet possess. This is also, f I'm making you guys try this, you need to find where your squared button is on your calculator. We haven't used it since relativity, probably. Drake, did you get uh, that? I'll call it 972 even. Riley, 972 what? Uh, energy, the ability to do work. That's why work and energy have the same units. Again, what that means, Mariah, is if that hit an object, it would definitely apply a force over a distance, possibly a fatal force over a distance if it hit a living object. car has the mass of 1,000 kilograms. I'm making up nice round numbers. How much kinetic energy is required to reach a speed of five meters per second? Well, Ke equals a half mv squared 0.5. Evan, what's the mass? 1,000. What's the speed? Squared. What do you get? Twelve thousand five hundred? Okay. Twelve thousand five hundred what? Jules. Okay. Evan, what's the speed in B? Like you make a little note here, twice as fast as, and then uh, part A. Can you give me about five more minutes, please? I want to make a good point here. Twice as fast as part A. My first thought might be, oh, twice as fast, twice the energy. In other words, my first thought might be 25,000, but let's crunch the numbers. When I crunch the numbers, I'm not going to rewrite the equation. I'm just going to go straight to numbers. It's going to be 1,000 times 10 squared. I'm going to be really clever. I'm going to just backspace. Whoop. I thought I was just going to backspace. Now I'm going to backspace and edit. 10 squared. Do you get twice as big? I get 4 times larger. Twice as fast gives me 4 times larger. Evan, how fast are we going in part C? 
you know what? That's uh, three times as fast as part A. How many times bigger here? Let's find out. And I get 112,500. How many times bigger is that? I'm going to divide. Divide by 12,500. And I get 9 times bigger. So you ready? Now we get to play spot the pattern. Twice as fast, four times more energy. Three times as fast, nine times more energy. What do you think four times as fast might be? 16 times as much energy. What do you think five times as fast might be? 25. What do you think six times as fast might be? Oh, is there a squared on the V in the equation? Now that I spotted the pattern, Jaden, that doesn't actually surprise me. I say, oh yeah, that's how it should behave. That squared pattern where doubling your speed needs four times more energy, tripling your speed needs nine times more energy is going to explain an awful lot. In fact, let's write this down, example six. So this already, just this alone, is going to allow us, Joseph, to make some good assumptions. Joseph, suppose an object has a kinetic energy of 5,000 joules. I don't know how fast it's going. I don't know its mass. I don't care. I just know it's got 5,000 joules. Suppose it wants to double its speed. How much energy will that take, Joseph, my friend? Four. Yeah. Four times 5,000. I can do that in my head. 20,000 joules. Uh, you ready? How many of you drive? or are driving and getting your license. Okay, ready? Gas mileage. To go twice as fast, your gas mileage is four times worse. Four times worse. This is why speeding is so stupid. Uh, if I wanted to triple its speed, Joseph, how many times bigger is it gonna be? So nine times, which in this case is gonna be 45,000. Jules? Uh, if I want to quadruple its speed, Joseph? 16 times 5,000, which in this case, 5,000 times 60, 80,000? Double check me. Mariah, what does this mean? So here's how this affects your little lives already. This explains, first of all, why sports equipment like golf clubs and tennis rackets and hockey sticks have become lighter, not heavier. You might think, hey, Mr. Duick, why wouldn't you, for example, have your golf club weigh like five kilograms on the like a sledgehammer? Because if you connected, that golf ball would take off like a rocket. But if I double the mass, I only get twice as much energy. If I can double the speed, how much more energy do I get to play with? And even if that means losing some mass, you get way more bang for your buck. This is why, well, in golf, for example, we always talk about club head speed. It all comes down to club head speed. Baseball bats, tennis rackets, golf clubs, they've all, uh, tennis rackets and golf clubs in particular over the last decade and a half have become lighter because we've realized, oh, even though we're trading off some mass, and there is an M in the equation too. Oh, that's squared. Uh, this explains why when you're riding your bike, it's more difficult to speed up once you already have kinetic energy. It's relatively easy to increase your bike speed from zero to five meters per second. But to go another five, to go from five to 10 is way tougher. And to go another five meters per second after that from 10 to 15 is way tougher. And it's because of that squared in the equation. And now I got to go serious to all my stupid teenager young drivers who I love, but who are stupid drivers. 
This explains why damage to occupants in car accidents is so dramatically different between an accident at 20 kilometers per hour compared with an accident at 80. Can you fix this? 80 kilometers per hour, not second. How much faster is 80 kilometers per hour than 20 kilometers per hour? How many times faster is that? Four times? I'm telling you, the people in the 80 kilometer per hour car accident will experience 16 times more damage. Not four times more damage, 16 times because that's squared. And so I say to you, in love, my angels, slow down for two reasons. Your fuel bill is going to be smaller, and the long-term life bill is going to be smaller. Slow down. Leave earlier, get there on time, drive slower. I realize I'm mostly talking to males in this group because you tend to drive stupider, so I've lectured you. Can you give me 10 more minutes? And then I'm done. 25, now, uh, put a little star next to number seven. That means, Sarah, this is important. What I'm often going to give you is the kinetic energy, and I'd like to know how fast. In particular, for roller coasters, I want to know how fast you're going at the bottom. I'll show you how you can calculate how much energy the car has at the bottom, and I want to know how fast it's going. I'm a roller coaster nerd. So in example seven, it says a 25 kilogram mass object has a kinetic energy of 924.5 joules. How fast is it traveling? You know what? I'll start out by writing Ke equals one half mv squared. Ready, Jared? I'm picking on you, my friend. How fast, Jared, we want to get the V by itself. The V. What's sitting right there? A squared? How will I get rid of that squared eventually later on? Yeah, how to get rid of a squared, folks. Okay, we will square root but later. Ready, Jared? Here we go. I'm going to leave the KE by itself. This one is on the top of a fraction, so that means it's one times. What's the opposite of one times? But does dividing by one change the question at all? So I'm going to ignore the one. We agreed? This two is on the bottom of a fraction. That means it's dividing by two. What's the opposite of dividing by two? So I'm going to draw a little arrow. The KE stays where it is, but you're telling me we're going to times by two. I agree. What's the M doing to the V, Jared? How will I move it over? Yep. Now, technically, that equals v squared. Cross out the squared. How to get rid of a squared? What did you say? This is one that you're going to do an awful lot. I'm, it's not on your formula sheet. I hope we just walked through how to derive it. How fast is this traveling? v is going to be the square root of 2 times 924.5 divided by 25. I want you all to try this on your calculator so that you know how to do this one on your calculator. I'm going to type everything in, hit equals, and then square root answer button. I'm going to, Evan, go 2 times 924.5 divided by square root answer button. And I think this works out not exactly evenly, but like to a nice decimal. I was making up nice numbers for some reason. 8.6, yes? Jared, 8.6, what? It's a speed. Speed, or a velocity. Well, it's not a velocity because it's a scalar. Speed, units. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mariah, this one you're going to be doing an awful lot this unit. How much kinetic energy? I want to know how fast. Roller coasters, water slides, rope swings. Speaking of roller coasters, let's look at a roller coaster. Suppose you know that a 350 kilogram roller coaster has a kinetic energy of 137,200 joules at the bottom of the first hill. How fast is it traveling? I'm going to re-derive the equation. I know I have it written on the line above, but just for practice, Angel, I'm going to say, OK, Ke equals a half mv squared. It's going to be times the 2 over, divide the mass over, and then Square root. 
Is that okay, Simone? Two hundred and thirty seven thousand two hundred divided by three hundred and fifty. Square root answer, 28. 28 what, Jared? It's a speed. How fast is that? Who remembers, how do I change that to kilometers per hour? It had something to do with the 3.6. Okay, I'm going to multiply. And I did this on purpose. Uh, this is a pretty good roller coaster. You're going 100 kilometers an hour. You're going freeway speed, 101. It's not bad. There are better, I've been faster, but this would get your attention. You would, you would consider this a thrilling, intense ride. So let's talk about ride design. Let's suppose you want to build this roller coaster and you want at the bottom of the first hill to be going 100 kilometers per hour, to be going 28 meters per second. How high do you need to build that first hill? Well, if all of that kinetic energy came from potential energy, really, here's what I'm saying. The potential energy has to be 137,200. Except, what was the equation for potential energy? Ah, MGH equals 137,200. Cody, I want to get the H by itself. What will I do with that M and that G? Because they're times A. Right? Why memorize new formulas when you can just... In fact, Cody, can we be lazy? Look up. I'm going to go, boom. Can I just do that on one line? Th that's enough work if you do that. I'll clue in what you've done. That's organized and lazy. Uh, the height of the first hill has to be... What was the mass? Uh, 350? Cody, what's G? Not negative anymore because it's scalar, right? Cody, is this a fraction? Yeah. Is more to one thing on the bottom? Yeah. Brackets. I have to build the hill 40 meters high. Otherwise, you're not getting the speed. Now, in real life, Ethan, this is assuming you don't lose any energy. In real life, you do lose some energy to friction, although they grease roller coasters down pretty good. But in real life, you'd have to build the hill a little higher than that. But we're in our magic physics world where the numbers work out nice. Okay. Jared, hustle back. You want to wait? I got some cool videos. And you want to hustle back? I got one of my cooler videos of the year. How high would we need to lift a 65 kilogram object to give it a potential energy of that? Well, PE equals MGH. Cody, again, how would I get the H by itself? More specific? Yep. If you can go straight to this, Cody, in your head by looking at the potential energy equation on your sheet, if you can go straight to that line, knock yourself out and please do. It's going to be... 1,000, sorry, 15,288. Now, what we're really starting to do here, this is the physics of uh, operating a pile driver. You might recall a few years ago when they were building the bridges, we had those massive pile drivers that were pounding those massive columns into the ground. You need to know how much force you want to apply. You can calculate how high you need to lift the weight to drop it down. Do you know what a pile driver is? OK, I'll show you a picture in just a second. Not, not the wrestling move, the actual industrial device. You get uh, 24? 24 meters. Okay. So example 10 says, suppose we want a pile driver to hit the ground. What's a pile driver? Not the wrestling move. Pile driver looks like this, okay? Although usually instead of a rope, they have like a column and pneumatics and things, but this is the idea. You're raising a weight up, you're giving it potential energy, 
you're letting it slam down with kinetic energy, and when it impacts, it applies a force over a distance, knocking the peg into the ground. Wrestling move. Jeez. Undertaker. I would kill you that move in wrestling, yeah. Shouting yeah, like someone's neck into the ground. Well, they do it all the time, but they support them. It's done very carefully, and they're not jabbing someone's neck into the ground. Uh, Evan, you know wrestling's fake. No, no that's not. Sorry. No way. <laughs> Dylan, suppose you want a 2,500 kilogram pile driver to hit the ground at 18 meters per second. How much kinetic energy does it need? Oh, kinetic energy equals what's the equation? How squared? Okay. 0.5, 2,500, 18 squared. How much kinetic energy does it need? Four oh five with three four hundred and five thousand joules? Yes? So where is that energy going to come from? You know what? How about from potential energy? How high do we need to lift this pile driver to guarantee that it hits the ground at 18 meters per second? This is something you might want to know. Now, I'm, by the way, I'm sure nowadays it's all done via computer and it's computerized, but let's pretend we have to calculate this by hand. We can. Uh, we want potential energy, which is mgh. Cody, this is your Q. How would I get the H by itself? In fact, you were saying, Mr. Duick, I would have gone straight to that line there. Okay. How much potential energy? 405,000, because the energy's got to come from somewhere. And that's going to be 2,500 times 9.8. This one I couldn't make work out evenly. 16.5 meters, we'll call it. Okay. If you can't raise it that high, you're in trouble. In other words, if there's an obstacle in your way from raising it that high, maybe you're doing construction underneath a bridge and you can't, you're going to hit the bridge if you raise it higher than that because you're underneath it. You've got to find something else. Two more. One more. Person is running at seven meters per second if they have a kinetic energy of 1764. What's their mass? Oh, you know what, Nicole? Let's get the M by itself. So kinetic energy equals a half mv squared. Nicole, let's get the M by itself, you and I. Uh, oh, I'm going to ignore the one because dividing or timesing by one, I say, Sarah, set up. We're nearly there. What am I going to do with the 2, Nicole? Um, Where is the 2? On the top or the bottom of a fraction? So is it multiplying or is it dividing on the right side? Dividing. So how will I move it over to the left side? So if I hear you correctly, and I think I do, you're telling me the KE just drops down, but there's now a 2 in front of it? And that takes care of that? Uh, how would I get the M by itself? What will I do with that there, B squared? Yeah. And I'm not going to square root because I don't care about the V squared. There's no squared on the M, so I don't need to square root. Nicole, do you mind? I'm going to put the M on the left side by itself because that's kind of where we're used to seeing stuff. Is that okay? Okay. So it's going to be 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the speed squared. What's this person's mass? Seventy-two? Really? I made this one work out evenly? Wow, I was nice on it. Seventy-two, uh, what? Mass? Kilograms. Okay. Types of energy, the main two, gravitational potential, mgh, kinetic, a half mv squared. I got to show you one of my coolest videos. Put your pencils down. Yeah,